Hello, hi. Uh, my name is Adam, uh, and I'm one of the co-founders of RealEye, uh, Webcom, an online platform for uh, providing neural marketing research, including Webcom eye tracking surveys and many, many more. So welcome to today's webinar. Uh, I'm super happy, super excited to show you uh, how actually easy it is to run an entire eye tracking research using just a web browser. So uh, I would like to cover all the three parts of running a typical eye tracking research. Uh, that includes uh, creating the study, participating in the study, but also and also analyzing the data. But before we go for before we move forward, I would like to uh, tell you a bit more information about uh, different approaches for uh, running eye tracking research. Basically, I would like to um, underline some differences between the online and the offline approach. Uh, and also, I would like to show you uh, from the let's say first. Uh, first person perspective, how it is to be part of an eye tracking research. So what a panelist, what a participant of the eye tracking research sees while uh, doing an eye tracking uh, exercise. Uh, so afterwards, uh, I'm going to show you briefly how to create an eye tracking study, just like the one that I have participated in. Uh, it's actually pretty simple and I would like to show you several uh, more advanced features like group randomization, uh, like A-B tests and so on. Uh, also, we're going to focus on a bit about the data analysis. So I already, uh, already uh, gathered around like 30 results for the uh, webinar for the webinar study that I'll participate in. So I think that there is going to be some uh, pretty nice piece of information to do the analysis uh, on. Uh, and then afterwards, I would like to tell you a bit more about our surprise. Uh, basically how to get a two months of eye tracking, of a real eye uh, research for running eye tracking studies. Uh, but that's at the end. Uh, so afterwards, I'm just going to give you some last thoughts about uh, our, let's say, uh, recent discoveries about uh, online versus offline approach, but let's leave that till the end. Uh, so few words about the company. Uh, so real eye uh, was launched in 2017. Uh, so we already, more than five years on the market. We're trusted by many, many different universities, literally from all over the world. And our tests can be uh, run in more than 25 languages at the moment. Uh, so we're serving both the academic sector and also the commercial sector for eye tracking research. So from our point of view, uh, there's a many researchers, many research institutes, universities using our tool for uh, doing neuromarketing and eye tracking research. Uh, but there's also a lot of uh, e-commerce, e maybe not e-commerce, but, e but many companies doing eye tracking research, uh, shopper research, uh, Experience, user experience research, both when it comes to an aggregated, or when it comes to, sorry, the qualitative and the quantitative uh, type of studies. So basically we're trying to be the best eye tracking tool, which is going to be, which can be used for any type of research that you can imagine, or that you have, were already doing offline in laboratory. Uh, so few differences between offline and online approach. So imagine for a moment that you have to conduct an eye tracking experiment with 20 different images or videos, uh, and you have to gather the data from 100 panelists. So basically here are your two options. So the first one is that you would need to purchase or hire pretty expensive hardware, uh, set it up in the offline laboratory, and then expect you should expect that the data collection will be rather slow and obviously offline. Uh, besides that, you will only need you will, you would only have access to local par participants. Uh, basically, the entire setup would be pretty hard to use, but it would work. And let's say after two weeks, because having eight, ten panelists a day is feels feels like a ceiling for a research like this. Uh, so after let's say two weeks, you will have all the data, and you'll be ready to. To, to do the data analysis. But the problem here is that we as a as a researchers, we rather uh, we would rather prefer to play with the data than collect the data with, with panelists. So here comes the other approach, the other angle that you can uh, that you can do very similar uh, similar studies, very similar research. You can use already existing devices in your in panelists' homes, which are webcams. And I mean by webcams, I also mean uh, webcams just like I'm recording this video to you right now. I'm doing this webinar with you right now, or webcams in your smartphones, webcams in tablets, or anything like this. Uh, so thanks to this approach, uh, the panelists can stay 100% online, and you're going to get the results immediately. Also, the cost of the setup uh, is much uh, more 
cheaper than having the entire offline laboratory set up with the equipment and also with the, all the licenses. So you can see that this approach is more cost effective and more time effective. Of course, you should expect that the accuracy of the data will be a bit lower than in inside the laboratories. We're using, let's say we're using webcams as the data collectors, not the very uh, typical infrared cameras uh, to do it, to achieve it. Uh, but in the matter of very, very often in a matter of having the data faster and cheaper, uh, the quality is, uh, the quality that webcam provides is good enough to get the conclusions. Uh, so we like to call it that you don't really necessarily need a letter size accuracy for any type of eye tracking study. Sometimes it's enough and very often actually it's enough that you're going to get, let's say it's a button size accuracy and you will still be able to get the results uh, without overpaying and overweighting. Uh, okay. Uh, I would like I would like to dive a bit more into the uh, real eye uh, since we're here, uh, just to open your your minds that there's not only webcam eye tracking in real eye. We do also have an attention metrics, which I'm going to cover in a moment. Facial coding uh, analysis. Uh, also, we do provide reaction time tests, and uh, we do have our in internal survey module that can be run when bet in between the presenting stimuli. Uh, on the top of that, there is this analysis dashboard with the ability to export the data. And again, it's all under a single license and it's all 100% online. Few more words about uh, webcam eye tracking. Mm, so as mentioned before, we are using webcams as a data collectors. So you can expect that you're gonna get the data uh, with the frequency, with the frame rate of around 30 Hertz. So it means that you're gonna get around 30 results per second. And the accuracy of our webcam eye tracking tool is around 100, 110 pixels. So we like to call it as like a website button size accuracy. Uh, one imp actually pretty important thing to, to notice here that we do operate on fixations as a matrix. So what's the difference between the gaze and fixation? So you can imagine that every data collector, every eye tracking data collector is capturing the gaze position several times per second. As mentioned in webcams, this is around 30, 30 times per second. Uh, so within the 30, 30 uh, times per second, the, the, the webcam can see where you were looking at uh, what you're looking at the screen. So imagine that right now that you're looking from the bottom left to the top right of the screen. And the eye tracker will also see some dots in between, some dots on the road. These are called gazes. So that's when fixations come in play because you should expect that eyes, even though eyes were captured by looking at these dots, uh, it doesn't mean that necessarily brain was that that brain was focused on what the eyes were looking at. So that's why something called fixation was invented by neuroscientists. And fixations are basically the moments where eyes stayed for some moment and were not leaving this area faster than some uh, faster than some defined velocity, some velocity. And what I just described is basically a fixation filter. So fixation filter is taking a group of gazes and grouping them by some parameters. In this case, in the real eye, we're using a velocity threshold filter, which is very similar to EVT Toby, uh, Toby EVT filter that they are using. And it means that to fixation happen, it has to have a minimum time. It cannot last longer than some defined time. And the eye cannot, uh, cannot um, leave the space faster than some desired speed. And what happens after having these filters, we are going to get two fixations, bottom left, top right, and a saccadic eye movement in between. So that's basically the basic metric that we operate in. Of course, there's also an option to operate on gazes, but that's uh, the recommended way to, to do it nowadays. As an example, this is live example of a cloud of gazes on the image. It doesn't say much. This, these are already calculated fixations, but without density. These are a fixation with the density based on their length. And as you can see, something is coming up here and we are starting to see a beautiful heat map, which is being created out of these, uh, out of these fixations. So that's, uh, that's how our, our data analysis, uh, works, uh, let's say from the. Uh, from the fixation perspective, not only gazes perspective. Uh, for any chosen area, uh, we're providing some additional metrics, so maybe, maybe not additional, but basic metrics about the fixations, amount of fixations, ratio, time to first fixation, and so on, but let's leave it for, for, for the future. Okay, back from 
uh, this question. Uh, the next thing that you're going to get in Rilla is the facial coding and the attention analysis. Uh, so the, um, we do provide three different facial states, the neutral facial state, uh, happy and surprise. So you can expect that you're going to see a graph with the uh, with some uh, movements whenever someone was uh, happy, surprised, or it was just not neutral. But there is also, it, it also goes in the aggregated way. But it, we do also have this attention score, attention metric, which is based on the eye movements. And a bit more about this, uh, the attention uh, is calculated based on the K coefficient. Uh, that was a paper, research paper developed in, uh, published in a, I think 2016 uh, by Andrew Duhowski, Isabella and Christoph Graetz and several other uh, researchers who basically divided the attention into two different uh, two different weight, whether the attention is ambient or focal. More uh, whether if the attention is more focal, it means that the brain is processing what the person is looking at. Whether the at, when the attention is ambient, the pre the brain is not processing and not focusing on the on what is being viewed. You can also see it as a, um, as let's say, group fixation fixation grouping. So uh, in this case, the slide presents, uh, let's say, a typical eye movement. Uh, again, like our the eye tracking is happening much faster. But let's say that uh, the fixation was somewhere here. Then the second was somewhere here. That's a pretty long distance between them. Then there were several fixations here with a very short distance and another one here. So we can see that uh, basically the amplitude of the uh, fixations and saccadic eye movements were were changing. So the definition, by definition, the K coefficient is uh, more ambient. The attention is more ambient when someone is leaving shorter fixations and very long saccadic eye, and longer saccadic eye movements, rather than leaving longer fixations with shorter saccadic eye movements. You can think of it like if someone is not attached with the site with anything, then he or she is still browsing the, the screen or the, the, the area around. And therefore, there is nothing to focus on yet. Meanwhile, if the focus is already on something, then the eyes are not jumping away from it too fast or too, uh, or too, too, too far away. So basically, you can expect to have also this K coefficient included in the eye tracking results. And it, again, it also comes in the aggregated way. This is very, very interesting, especially for uh, video uh, analysis. Uh, this is an example of a video, Heineken video advertisement, and there's the distribution between the ambient and focal attention. This, in case, in this case, this is uh, individual panelist uh, results, but this can be again as an aggregated. If you would like to learn more about the K coefficient, I had a pleasure to interview Krzysztof Kreitz, again one of the co-inventors uh, of it. Uh, just uh, click the link here or find it on our website. Uh, it's pretty interesting how they came up with the idea and how it was actually implemented in uh, in actual psychological research. Uh, another thing is reaction time tests. So uh, in addition to gaze position uh, and the facial state, we also our tool is also observing the keyboard and the mouse movements. Therefore, you can use it for your research. So you can, for instance, ask your panelists to press spacebar as soon as they are, I don't know, bored with the advertisement, or you can ask them to click several parts on image, uh, creating so-called website mockup, asking them to browse freely through the through the entire website mockup and do the data analysis about how fast they were clicking, where they were clicking, whether they were clicking at all and so on and so on. So this is additional layer that can be used uh, in here. Mm, and the last but not least, the data analysis uh, allows you to see not only individual recordings, but also aggregated recordings, aggregated heat maps. Uh, also, you can, you're can you getting it, we're gonna get access to the hour of interest tool. And all, there's an always option to download the uh, eye tracking data uh, into the CSV format uh, or access it via API. Uh, okay, so, uh, it all sounds great, but the best thing here is that it actually works. It is being used by, as mentioned, several different universities, academic institutions, including uh, Clemson University, uh, Andrew Tudukowski, quoting Andrew Duhovsky, Relay is usable for psychological research. That was actually a paper describing that Relay can be used for psychological research. Andrew Duhovsky is like a godfather of eye tracking. He's one of the uh, co-authors or the only author uh, of the eye tracking methodology of the, let's say, an eye tracking Bible nowadays so again it works and it's it, it's really wonderful uh that, that's a picture actually of andrew and isa uh 
showing uh, the, the the paperwork in the eye tracking symposium in 2022 uh, in Seattle. Uh, another wonderful uh, quote in this case: every, Everyone in the class was able to provide eye tracking data for the videos, analyze and discuss the data obtained from the entire class, all within 90 minute labs. That proves that it works and it works fast, and it can be used not only for research but also for for teaching and for many different other uh, other things. Okay, so Aris is usually works with the with the new technology. There is somehow you have to kind of like take a leap of faith to to believe it, to understand that it actually works. And this is very normal when it comes to new technology. Webcam eye tracking is still considered as a new technology, so we are here to help you taking this leap of faith. This is one of the purpose of the webinar of this webinar that we're uh, in together. Uh, so we've prepared a short. Uh, a short presentation of how it works from the panelist's perspective. Let me share my screen right now uh, so you will be able to see me taking part in the eye tracking research. I'm going to uh, minimize myself and just show the the screen. So this is what a panelist, a typical panelist sees see while he or she is being redirected to the eye tracking part. So this is a short line of introduction, instruction before the test starts. Mm -hmm. Now I'm asked to choose uh, the webcam that I would like to participate with. And what are we going to see in a minute is a calibration. Calibration is uh, currently made out of uh, 40 different uh, dots, which are being uh, like moved around the screen. And the calibration itself is happening on three different backgrounds white, gray, and black. And this is simply because uh, our system needs to learn how the eyes of the panelists look like while he or she is looking at different parts of the screen. And the light and the monitor itself is a pretty heavy source of light. So that's why uh, our system is, while, calibration, while calibrating, is doing it on three different, let's say, lighting conditions. Uh, right after these 40 dots, I'll be asked to destroy four dots just using my eyes. That part is called calibration check. So in case I am capable of doing it, it means that I'm calibrated well and I can follow uh, to, the, to the test itself. Okay, the test starts. Hello, please take a look at the following materials. Please click the product you would purchase. Okay, so that's the test. I'm moving my mouse more or less when I'm looking just to give you, the, give you guys the idea of the accuracy, and I'm clicking the Evian water on the top. Here, I'm being presented with the water only, with the bottle. Uh, what's the pH balance of Evian water? I remember that it was 7.2. Watch the video advertisement, press spacebar if you'd like to finish earlier. Okay. That's the advertisement. Maybe one note here, if in case panelists would, would <laughs> move his or her head too much or just leave the computer, then Relay would ask him or her to go back to the uh, previous position, showing this pop-up. Okay, how much you like the advertisement? So these are the survey questions in between. Uh, that's a mock-up test. So right now I'm being presented with a mock-up and uh, this test is actually to, this test is uh, testing this pop-up uh, calendar booking page. So I need to book a meeting and I'm using this just at this was a regular, regular website. Uh, so, I have just uh, kind of like imitated uh, live website movements and uh, and subscribed for a book for a for a booking uh, for a, sorry for a call. Estimate how long the visitor was away from his family. Ten seconds. Okay, this is so called Yarbus test. is used for uh, that for basically showing how eye tracking data can diff can be different. Uh, when the context is different. So I will show you in a minute uh, what I meant by that. So in this case, uh, I'm just going to fill in this last survey, which is not obligatory. 
And once we are ready, that's the end of the test. So I'm going to go back to the, uh, to the presentation for a moment uh, to show you how the study was um, constructed. So um, here in my slides, there is this, uh, this is the study flow. So this is basically how the study was uh, prepared to, to be presented. The first, as you were actually, as you noticed, was the planogram. So I was asked to click the product I would purchase. And that was an A-B test. So there were two different planograms and they were randomly chosen between, between version A or version B. Uh, then I was presented with the Avian Water. There were also two different packages. So I have just observed one of them, even though I was asked after which was the pH water, what was the pH level of the, of the, of the water. There were two different envelopes. And basically, uh, you can then conf kind of like see control uh, what, what, how, how differ the exposure to the actual, uh, to the actual answers, declarative answers of the uh, of the product. Then I have seen the Heineken video advertisement. It was presented to me. Also, that was an A-B test. And then there was the pop-up test. That was a separate stimuli uh, for testing the pop-up. And then there was a walk-up test. So I was asked to walk through the website and try to book a meeting with Relay Team. That was a mock-up test. Uh, and then I was presented with one of this, these images, which were actually the same, but the context was different. So the first one had instructions to try, try to grade how old people on image are. And the second were on the second was, uh, I was asked to try to estimate how, for how long the visitor was away from home. And basically what we are expected to see here is two different heat maps because there were two different contexts, uh, for this, for this exercise. Uh, and then, uh, in this case, it was not um, set, but uh, I could have been redirected to any third party URL. That could be your survey, uh, your panel or anything like this. That's an option built in our in real eye uh, that allows you to, to redirect panelists further to any chosen URL. Uh, okay, as promised, now I will show you uh, how to create such a study. So to achieve this, I will share my screen again. Uh, uh, and go to the study dashboard. But first of all, before moving forward, I will show you uh, my results. So uh, this is it. This is uh, me. These are the results that I have just provided a moment ago. This is my test flow. So it's exactly what I was looking at and what order, including my survey answers. Uh, perhaps also how long I was looking at certain items. Uh, and here on the right, we can see the aggregated uh, results uh, for each one of the uh, items, including the statistics for the uh, for the survey question, in this case, apparently only only or uh, that's actually a pretty good number. Forty percent of panelists uh, were kind of like recalled that the pH water was seven point two. We can see the finish on keeper statistics. So, what was the average finish time? What was the what were the aggregated survey uh, responses? and so on. But uh, let's start with looking at my uh, recording. The recordings are available right away after every panelist finishes his or her test. Also, it's actually pretty important to underline that our tool is never ever recording anything from the panelist webcams or never taking any pictures or images. So all the calculations are happening on the panelist web browsers and we are not storing the videos, not even sending them to our servers. Uh, we rely as a European based company, we have pretty strict GDPR, I mean like privacy data protection policy. So we wouldn't even like to have all the data from uh, panelists from people's uh, homes on our servers. So all the calculation is happening online and this is actually pretty, pretty wonderful thing. Okay, so this is more or less uh, of my gaze uh, looking at the planogram again, I, I clicked Avian Water. That's my gaze browsing through the through the bottle. Uh, I'm going to swipe to uh, speed up to the mm, to the mock-up test, so you can see how uh, how it is when it comes to the uh, website testing. So that was me looking browsing the uh, the pop-up, uh, trying to figure out uh, what to do to close it. And then I was browsing the page. Uh, reading it, scrolling down, everything is is recorded, including mouse my, mouse movements, mouse clicks, and and so on. Uh, so, but this is the, 
even though this is already powerful uh, data analysis, including individual interactions, uh, this is not yet the power of, uh, of eye tracking in full sense, full scope. Uh, also, as you can see here, there, is, there are a few graphs here, including the uh, emotional states of surprise, neutral, and happiness. Uh, as you can see, uh, the surprise and the happiness levels were a bit higher here uh for myself in this video advertisement when it appeared that he doesn't have keys uh that's that's actually kind of kind of funny joke for me every time i see these advertisements uh but also we can see the uh attention as mentioned before the k coefficient for each stimuli individually as you can see there are some of the kind of like small spots in between here uh, but also in time, so we can observe which, for instance, uh, part of the advertisement brought the biggest type of the biggest attention uh, for individual panelists in this case, but also for the aggregated all the panelists as well. So let me jump right now to the uh, to the part which is all about aggregated statistics. Uh, one more thing, uh, with uh, our tool, probably you have already noticed that we are grading panelists' uh, quality. Uh, these are very good, uh, perfect, good quality results, and so on. So let me just jump quickly and tell you a bit more about the uh, about the data quality and the stops and the drop rates. So we can observe here uh, that um, we are calculating uh, data quality individually for every single panelist and then aggregating the data quality for the entire study. So in this case, uh, we have a very good data quality, uh, which basically is, is, is very good. And in case the quality is low or lower, then we can kind of like eliminate this panelist by simply ignoring the data uh, from, the, from the list. Uh, the data quality is being calculated based on several different factors, including uh, mo mostly based on the frequency rate of the webcam, but also percentage of the eye tracking data through the entire study length. These are probably the two most important metrics. Okay, let's jump to the heat maps panel. This is the aggregated uh, data, heat maps data for all the panelists. We can uh, see here uh, the average viewing. Let's let me just, for, in, for instance, uh, slide this down and see what was happening within the uh, within the very first, let's say, five seconds of the test. So I'm interested in only first five seconds. Uh, and this is the heat map for only the first five seconds. This is for all 31 tests. Again, I can uh, eliminate the low, very low quality data quality uh, results by applying this filter. Apparently, there were no low quality data in this case. So let me just go back to the very first five seconds uh, and see what was happening. So to see what was happening when it comes to the IP movement perspective, we do have two tabs here for two types of metrics, the gazes-based metrics and the fixation-based. I already covered this at the beginning. So again, I'm going to use the fixation-based metrics. And we can see metrics like average time to first fixation, which is basically the average time to first notice, average time spent, that's pretty self-explanatory, total amount of fixations. So let's say total amount of eye hits ratio. So how many panelists have noticed this area? Uh, the rest is also pretty important for a uh, more, let's say, psychological maybe reason. Uh, reason. Uh, for, instance, for, for instance, the first fixation duration can matter whether something in, caught your attention. So in case a uh, first fixation duration is longer than the average fixation duration, it means that the eye actually was interested in the, in the price. So basically, there is a lot of different insights here, uh, including um, uh, information about clicks. So we also do have amount of clicks. In this case, there was just one click for this element. We can see also clicks uh, as on the, let's say, visual way. Uh, and the time to first click was 2.15 seconds. So let me test, since Avian Water was the one that was in our interest, let me create an arrow of interest right over here and see what were the metrics here. So we can see that five panelists have chosen the avian water but again that was only within the first five seconds let's give this test a bit more time so within the entire test scope uh, the avian got 11 clicks with the average time to first click 6.35 and the average first fixation 3.69 only 30 uh, yeah and only 45 percent of panelists have noticed this area 
So that's also pretty interesting. It feels like this is pretty nice success rate for the Evian water. We can also compare these results with the different uh, waters. So let's say that these three are gathered as the Pereira uh, water. We can see that in total, these three got around 77% ratio and average time to first fixating on any type of Pereira water was 2.55, even though it only got four clicks. Uh, these are uh, th there is a lot of and plenty of different insights that can be taken out of eye tracking metrics, including, for instance, uh, how fast the time between click versus time between noticing. It means like how people, how uh, how sure people were to decide to purchase the product that they have already noticed. So whether they wanted to browse a bit more to to look for something different, or they have just noticed the water that they they really like, and there were no other questions whether to choose it or not. Uh, going back to the left panel here, there is an option to see the heat maps for individuals, but there is also option to filter out uh, panelists by different tags. I'm not sure if we do have tags set up set up right over here. Oh yeah, there are some tags with called webinar two. Let me add just one tag for my results here. And what I would like to show is that we can just set, apply these and, and filter out by tags exposure numbers, male, female, gender, age, and so on and so on. So basically all types of filtering is happening. There's also the ability to see the heat map as a, uh, as a view map and as a fog view uh, by changing the opacity uh, and, and change the opacity of this of, of, of the image. So if in case the heat map is too dense, uh, you don't have to, it, it's not that I'm playing with the data right now, I'm just maneuvering the visualization part, the data behind it is, is still the same. Apparently webinar second analysts are not so focused on Avian water, they are rather focused on different products. Uh, that's just a, I just have thought. Uh, okay, uh, so that was the heat maps. I'm going to ignore the second uh, the second question since uh, it is very similar to the first one. Uh, we can right now jump to the video data analysis. So this is a video advertisement, uh, and we can observe uh, the K coefficient and the facial coding uh, a bit more here. Since we, to be honest, we don't see much of a facial facial movement when people are interacting with images, but when it comes to uh, interactions with videos. This is a pretty, uh, pretty common thing to see some facial, uh, facial coding in action. So uh, not only uh, the heat maps are uh, matter matter here, but also we can see uh, the graphs below, as mentioned previously. So we can see where the attention was captured the most. So in this case, that moment got the biggest type span of attention. And that was actually the moment where it was this aha uh, moment in the advertisement. So that's, that, that, that's it, it means that it got um, a pretty decent amount of attention. When it comes to the area of interest analysis, so uh, there's also the same heat map panel that allows you to uh, maneuver with the time slider and see and select what was happening when it comes to the uh, the when it comes to the eye tracking uh, data. So let's say that the bottle itself is going to be our area of interest. We can see all the metrics here. So total amount of gazes, ratio, clicks, and so on for the same metrics as for image. Right now I'm on the gazes tab. We can always switch to fixations. So these numbers will probably change slightly, uh, but basically again, it's going to be held on the eye, eye hits rather than the uh, eye movements. Okay, so that was very briefly the video uh, analysis. Uh, what else? So there was this option here uh, to present one of these two pop-ups that was an A-B test, which pop-up is going to bring more attention. I'm going to open both of them in several, several tabs. Uh, so we can see that the heat maps are a bit different. Apparently here, the good news is coming was uh, was capturing more attention when it comes to, let's say, the visual side. We can measure this obviously by creating an arrow of interest and see, let's say, what was the average time spent. In this case, 0 0.59 seconds. In this case, it was around 0 0.57. That was very similar. Uh, fixations, 22. In this case, 33. Okay, that's pretty pretty big difference. So that got much more fixations. And probably since it got more fixations, I would expect that the OK button or the X button, which were closing, uh, were 
clicked a bit. Uh, it took more time to 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 click the buttons. Uh, that that's just a rough rough hypothesis, but let's see. So in this case, it got eleven clicks. The average time to first click was around three point sixty four, and average time to first fixation two point two. In this case. There is a pretty significant difference. Again, the first time to first fixation was a second later. So this pop-up got a second more attention on the image and the average time to first click uh, was much, uh, much 3.3, was, was very similar to the, to the, the first one. Uh, you, you may think that the, it, it should not be lower than the average time to first click, but uh, there were also, the entire area was mapped to click. So also this button was mapped to click. So the average would need to be, as you can see, the clicking on this area was uh, a bit, uh, took a bit longer, around 4.28 seconds. And there were some gazes as as well here. Okay, so I've just switched to gazes to see how it how the heat map was shaping for both of them. Uh, pretty pretty nice, pretty pretty easy test uh, for uh, for pop-ups. Uh, maybe let's just quickly jump into the uh, the I think the last one or the pre almost the last one. This is a website mock-up. So what we were trying to see is are people paying attention to the free dates? This calendar was presented was presenting at dates that were available. How many clicks got, uh, how many clicks were here and how many clicks were actually in the first hour of interest? That was the, uh, the book now call to action. And we can see that the average time to first click was around eight and average time to first fixation was pretty fast. It was four. Uh, also the logo type apparently was not really noticeable. Only 10% oh, of people have noticed it. And we can also see how it was shaped within the, within the let's say first, uh, first five seconds again here. So ob pretty obviously no one was able to scroll down here with that fast but they were scrolling here. What's surprising me is that this image on right over here on the right, it's not capturing any type of uh, fixation. So any type of attention. So it feels like people are just ignoring this image uh, at all. Let's see what's happening with the gazes. With the gazes, it's a bit different. Well, even though there is like, all of them were noticing it, like 30 or th almost 50% have noticed this image, maybe maybe even maybe a bit less because uh, the area of interest is uh, corresponding with the with the text then the average time spent is really really low it's below a second it's even below half of a second uh, that's that's also pretty pretty interesting insight uh, about the supporting supporting images whether to a b test the, them or not or to choose to choose something that matters uh, and the last one, uh, I like this example because it shows that the context matters. Let me just uh, change the visibility, the, the heat map opacity. Let's say that 0 0.19 and 0 0.19 right over here as well. Uh, so we can already see that the heat maps are much different. And uh, again, there was two different contexts. The first one to, to, was to grade how long the, pan, the visitor was away from home. And the second was to grade how old these people are. are. This is, this heat map presents how old people are, where and the, the, uh, the, the eye spots, the heat maps are very, very dense on people. Meanwhile, here, the heat is also uh, pretty intense on the walls, looking at these paintings on the walls. Uh, per perhaps something was, I don't know, capturing their, their attention that they wanted to grade. So this study is very often performed in, very, in, in, in several different hypotheses. There are several others, let's say, instructions or contexts here. I, I just chosen to, uh, to provide these two uh, as just just uh, to prove some to prove some point to, to provide you with the uh, with the context. Mm. Okay, uh, I will go back right now to the presentation, and we are slowly going to wrap it up. I think that was a pretty uh, big amount of information as for uh, as for one session. So we have already covered data analysis. And I believe that now it's time to give you the idea of what our uh, surprise is. So uh, as mentioned, we are uh, would like to offer uh, a free two months license to our software, to Reliant.io software. And what we would uh, like to get in return uh, is a common 
case study with with you with the with the agency uh, marketing research uh, company or uh, whatever profile uh, you are so uh, basically the idea here here is that uh, companies very often need to learn how the tool works, how the tool looks like, and what are the metrics before making the decision to purchase. And that's what we hear all the time. Therefore, our idea is here to, to provide you with the tool for free and uh, to, 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 so we can provide some data analysis, some, some insights to your customer, to your existing or new customers. But in return, we also uh, need to spread the world about, spread the word about real life to the world. And therefore, we would like to be part of this uh, this experiment, this uh, this test as a technology provider and be able to show off to the world that we, together with you, with your company, uh, were involved in this study and, and got some interesting results, interesting insights. So in case you are uh, interested in such a cooperation, uh, then please write us directly. My email is adam at realeye.io or just visit the page that I'm presenting the link right now. Uh, there are also the similar similar instructions uh, on how to proceed. So I hope that this feels uh, that feel that that feels right uh, for you as well, uh, and that we can create these win-win situations when you're gonna get uh, insights based on the new and free for you tool. We're gonna get some nice uh, nice content and nice case study, and the customer, your customer is going to get nice insights and also some some press. Uh, okay, one last thing before uh, before we disconnect. Uh, so one, uh, the, we are very often getting this question about people struggling with the accuracy, whether it's okay, whether it's whether they can perform the eye tracking studies with the webcam accuracy. And as mentioned at the very beginning of the webcam accuracy is obviously lower than the dedicated infrared eye tracking equipment, equipment, hardware equipment. But uh, again, uh, studies are already presenting uh, that it is, let's say, good enough for running a psychological research. So you can actually do it. And here is a small example of what you can expect. So uh, let's say that you're asking your panelists to see at the cross and something like this can happen. Something like this actually will happen because this because this is a, this is a webcam based eye tracking not an infrared eye tracking but that's what we in 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 our company called an error and this is this is strictly normal thing to get a measurement error and the error the probability of the error is much lower further from the actual point so you can think of it as the error is a gaussian curve that represents the probability that error will appear in a cer in certain distance from the from the measured element. So uh, now imagine that you're going to get much more data than just one single fixation that since we're getting data at 30 frames per second, we're going to get like at least two, three fixations per uh, per second. We should, depend, of course, depends on the fixation length and, and, and so on and so on. But let's say that we're going to get two or three fixations per second. We're going to have a situation like this where the heat itself is going to be much more dense inside the the desired point so we can think of it as two different gaussian curves uh, crossing themselves in the tipping point where the actual uh, measurement should take place so uh, when you're running an aggregated analysis using webcam eye tracking a uh, typical quantitative tests then it is going to provide you with the good results just take in mind that single individual results may have some offset but also when it comes to offset, if it's important to underline that uh, we do have something called a success rate. It means that out of, uh, it, it means how many panelists will finish the tracking part providing a good quality data. And we can kind of like, we're pretty confident that Real Eye is providing pretty good numbers in here. So out of every 100 panelists, you're gonna get around 80, 85% good uh, 885 panelists with good quality results, which is which is pretty significant when it comes to uh, high scale eye tracking research. This image is representing an actual accuracy test. Uh, so as you can see, there is a lot of there are some simple single fixations all around the screen, but the major majority of them is within the box. And as mentioned, this is the 100 around 110 10, 110 pixels. Uh, when it comes to the, the accuracy. Okay, uh, 
thanks so much for uh, for uh, being with me uh, here today. And uh, in case you have any questions, I'm available under my email, or you can simply use the chat box in on our page. We should be there to answer uh, your questions. Uh, so uh, thanks again, and have a good day. Bye bye.